the Sean, first of all, um, you're a grad, alum of UCLA. What does it mean to you to be the head coach at your alma mater? It's just something that you can't put into words. You know, um, it's a, I'm truly blessed to be able to be in this position and be the head football coach at my alma mater. But you know, it just doesn't stop there. We got to get out there and win some games. Yeah. And, now, so. in your career path, as you got into coaching, was it your always your intent or goal to be a head coach? Um, not necessarily. You know, I was kind of enjoying my role as the running back coach. But just to rewind it a little bit, I didn't know that I even wanted to coach. Yeah. So I start with that. And then as I learned how to teach, it, it just took off from there. Yeah. What made you decide to get into coaching? Um, I was I needed to come and finish my undergrad. So I came back to do that. And then um, I was thinking about going to law school just because I knew that would buy me three more years, some uh. more time to figure out what I wanted to do. Oh. But, you know, but football was calling and you know I, I guess I kind of figured it out kind of fast and what's the most gratifying part of being a coach I think it's the development part for me you know just uh being able to teach somebody stuff that you know you know and then see them actually do it on the field that's, there's nothing better than that yeah I guess also welcome to the Big Ten right uh you are a Pac-12 guy and and a West Coast guy uh, what does that feel like? I mean, today's probably your first real entree into it. What, what, what are your feelings about being in the Big Ten? Um, it's exciting. It's, um, you know, we're, we're in a real conference. This is, this is somewhere that, you know, you, you have potential to, to go to the playoffs every year, um, win end of the year awards, um, you know, and just play football games that are being seen constantly on big channels and networks. So I'm just excited for it. You know, I think this is a lot of exposure that our players need and, you know, it's going to help them make it to the next level. Yeah. What are some of the specific challenges that you see ahead of playing in this league? I mean, obviously travel, weather, some different things that, that might be things you're going to have to, to work through. I don't think travel is going to be that big of an issue. I think it's more of the, the stadiums itself. You know, just playing in front of 100,000 is just something that they haven't seen. Um, I'm not worried about the traveling part. That that comes with it. But, you know, if I can kind of neutralize that, that wow factor in some of those stadiums, I think it would be okay. Now, obviously in this setting right now, you have a very mild manner, demeanor, very quiet, thoughtful. Uh, is that different on the field with your guys? I would say it is. <laughs> yeah. I would you, say that. You get a little, get a little after him with. It's just a little bit. You know? <laughs> what do you think is the best thing that you bring to this job and to UCLA? Um, a little bit of relatability. Um, I'm a disciplinarian, so my running backs liked it. You know, I, I haven't had too many players that didn't, that on the team like that were just rebelling against me, or, but it's. It's been it's been good. We've been it's been good. Yeah. Um, one of the guys that you hired on your staff, Eric Bieniemy, uh, has a great legacy and track record. What has he meant to you? Meant to your staff? Meant to the the players on your team? He's just somebody that anybody in the building can bounce something off him. Of. You know, he has so much knowledge in in the game. He's coached for so long that he can help you in some aspect. You know, so you should, you should just use him. So I, that's what I liked him there for. I, he's actually somebody I can bounce things off of and, and get a real answer and not just a, you know, he can, he, he's really helping me basically. So obviously you have aspirations, goals, or where you want to see UCLA get to, where you want this program to be. What, what are the biggest challenges that you see right now in getting from where you are right now to where you want to be? Um, we won eight games last year and the year before, so it's not really broken, but it's just a little bit of fine tuning, you know? Just just come out there and, and, and play at a certain level and enjoy it, enjoy playing at that certain level, because I think that might catapult us to some more points or a turnover or just into something. You have a guy in Ethan Garbers who has experience at the quarterback position. Um, what, what would you say are his strengths as a player and what are your expectations for him? Um, Ethan is a exception. He's a scratch golfer first to start there, <laughs> you know. Um, sneaky athletic, can hoop, can dunk, can punch it. He's just a um, just a good athlete, and uh, I'm just excited to see what he can do once we give him that opportunity in the fall. You know, we got to keep him upright. He stays healthy. I think sky's the limit. 
Your defense last year, a very solid year. You lose your coordinator uh, and a couple dynamic pass rushers. What, what's it going to take to to play at that same kind of level of defense? Um, it's going to take the whole defense. It's not going to be just some edges or something like that. You know, it's going to take the whole defense to replace last year. That's a fifth round pick. I mean, a fifteenth pick. Um, if you cut the draft on late, you didn't see him. You didn't see the the, the defense player get picked itself. So, it's just more of a. Um, all the guys that are getting in there is more of a collective than just one individual. Yeah. You, know? you probably know more about UCLA, Westwood, the whole experience than any of the guys on your team. How do you try to educate your guys or, or teach them about UCLA, the UCLA experience, the history uh, associated with it? Um, I, just trying to bring back certain type of things that are from the history, from like I'm bringing back Bruin Walk. I want the, the players to walk through the fans to the stadium, you know. So just trying to bring little traditions. That's that, something you did when yeah, you were a player. I did when I played, and yeah. and it was just just got me ready for the game, you know. Being able to walk through with the fans, hear the cheering, see your family for the last time, and then go out there and, and execute. Yeah. What about uh, have you been able to connect with other former Bruins and maybe teammates of yours or guys and? encouraging them to, to kind of come back and be around the guys. Yeah, I have, yeah. It's just been um, just reaching out to everybody, you know. Uh, any group chat that I'm in that has Bruins in there, I'm mentioning stuff. So just trying to get everybody out here as a collective. When this first season is said and done, what, what do you hope that you will have accomplished? And, and what do you want the identity or the personality of this team to be? Something close to my pillars. So discipline, respect, and enthusiasm. That's what I would want to see every day. But I just want to make sure that we can get out and just execute yeah. you know, at a high level. Um, and, and something that's not predicated on the who we're playing against. You know, you can, you can show up and play hard no matter what. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. You mentioned your pillars. You, what, what are your pillars? Um, discipline, respect, and enthusiasm, DRE. Now, did you develop them yourself? Did those come from somewhere else, or how did you get um, The that? discipline and respect came from my dad. The rest I came up with. Well, the enthusiasm I came yeah. up with. Yeah. Did you play with a lot of enthusiasm? I really didn't as a player. I did when I was little, but the older I got, the more I knew it was still 0-0 after yeah. you were talking, so I just let it go.